What's good, YouTube? Quinn Way Basketball Analysis coming to you with a video about the New Orleans Pelicans. I already talked about their new addition to their to their team. It's Tony Allen. I just made a video about him, and he has a lot of heart. He has a lot of hustle. He has a lot of will. He has, he he does the little things that might not show up in the box score, like diving for loose balls fighting for position clearing out so people can get the rebound obviously he's offensively challenged and we done seen golden state just put andrew bogut on him because he can't make a damn shot sometimes but he does pick his spots when the score and he does try to score the shots he can and he does do like backdoor cuts and get steals and run in transition but at this point in his career you just getting him for his defense because you don't really know how good the guy going to be coming off this injury, but that's why you don't pay him these high expensive numbers. You get him on a good contract that he can play out, and if he's not healthy, they actually have other guards now that can take up those minutes at the shooting guard position because this team was basically mediocre at every position besides power forward, center, and point guard. Other than that, the team just was struggling because they couldn't find real NBA talent. And this been going on for years. I said Anthony Davis is one of the top five players in the world to me. And if not, he's top seven. The dude can rebound. He can shoot the basketball from three from the mid-range, put the ball on the floor. Sometimes he posts up. He erases shots from the three-point shot from the mid-range. Even if you come to the paint, he's just a terror because you see him coming. You got to get the shot up quick, and sometimes that's not even enough. Or sometimes you think you got the shot, and he comes over it because he clears so much space, and he still blocks it or contests it. So the dude can defend the dude can score the damn basketball he is super efficient he's dominant at this point is not really a whole of his game besides he need to shoot threes better but if i'm the pelicans i don't even want the guy to shoot threes because he is so lethal in the mid-range and close to the basket and he's long and lanky because he can always just turn around and tap the ball in or just hook the ball in because he's long longer and has a ridiculous reach so if I was the Pelicans, I don't even want him at the three-point line unless I really had to space out the floor. But other than that, I want him close to the basket and within five, I mean, zero to 15 feet. That's why I want Anthony Davis in because he's so tall he can just tap the ball in the basket, whether he's shooting or just using his reach with floaters. And being back to the basket, he can always get a good look at the basket and just basically throw it in just like Kareem and them did. As I'm calling him Kareem, no, but the dude has the size and the athletic ability to just be better than anybody at his position. Matter of fact, the best power forward, power forward in the league is Anthony Davis. And if you put Anthony Davis at the center, he's going to become the best center in the league. But that's just my opinion. DeMarcus Cousins is a guy that you don't really know what you're going to get out of because when he was playing, they was winning games with and without him. So it kind of make you wonder, is DeMar, can he stay on the court? Can he stay not getting suspended? Is he going to be a, a problem, a cancer f for the team? Will he stay on the Pelicans in general? Because if they don't win this year, if they don't show no improvement, he is a free agent, so he can just leave anyway. And if this doesn't work out by the trade deadline, I can even see him trading DeMarcus Cousins just to get something back if he does decide that he wants to leave. At least you get something back because you gave up Buddy Hill and players that's young. For DeMarcus Cousins, obviously, I'd rather keep him because of his talent. He's a dominant post player. He's an excellent passer. He's a great, he's a good, a solid three-point shooter. He's a solid free throw and mid-range scorer. He has every damn tool in the game. He's not that good of a, def he's not a terrible or amazing defender, but he's a solid defender, not great. And he has great touch. He's physical. He's a stupendous rebounder and he has a lot of effort and hustle when it comes to that and he's a terror close to the basket the problem i have with this team is that they shoot too many jump shots when they have the size and the athletic ability with in the in the paint with anthony davis demarcus cousin you can always go high low post kind of like what josh smith was doing with dwight howard anthony davis can see over a damn near anybody that he he's getting guarded against and he can either shoot over them or pass it to demarcus cousin or get some lobs and some uh high low passing 
to DeMarcus Cousins to get easy baskets. And if he doesn't, he can always score one-on-one because you can't stop DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis one-on-one. We all know that. And then Drew Holiday is a guy that I'm a fan of. He can come in. He can knock down threes at a respectable clip. He can get to the paint anytime he wants to into the free throw line. He's always been a good free throw shooter. He always been a willing passer. And he always been a solid defender because he's long and lanky, just like Anthony Davis for the point guard position. And he has the height to play the two guard position just in case they want to put Ray John Rondo at point. They can always slide Drew Holiday to the two because he can shoot the three, shoot the mid range, get to the paint and get out in transition regardless he's at the one or the two. And that actually allows them to play small, even though they're not really small because Drew Holiday got the size of a point guard kind of. Because he is 6'4", 6'5", and that's what shooting guards is 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". So he can actually play that position too if they want to have both of them on the court, especially in crunch time. You want the best player that you can on the court, on the court to help you win games. And they, they end up picking up Ian Clark. He's a guy that can snipe the ball. They need his shooting on his roster. He's 6'3". He can play the point or the shooting guard position. He's a guy that can come in and knock down shots. He can play the the decoy role where Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins getting double teamed or trapped or they need to make an extra pass or a hockey assist. Ian Clark, Ian Clark going to be a beneficiary of that because he can knock down the mid-range jumpers. He can get out in transition. He can spot up and shoot the three. And he's solid at all those things. So he can be a beneficiary of everybody focused on Drew Holiday, Anthony Davis, Rondo, and DeMarcus Cousins that he can get some easy baskets. Jordan Crawford is a guy that was in and out of the league, but he's a guy that can score the damn basketball. He's a low-volume scorer, but he's a guy that can create his own shot. He can knock down mid-range. He's solid in the pick and roll when it comes to scoring or getting space. He's a guy that can hit you up or light it up. Dante Cunningham is a power forward that's really a stretch four. He has the body. And he has the size to a certain extent. He will he'd be a small ball four, but he can knock down threes. Not the most amazing, prolific three point shooter, but he gets the job done. And he's gonna be a beneficiary of Anthony Drew Holiday, Rondo, and Demarcus Cousin getting spot up shots and easy baskets because they draw so much attention. You have players like Perry Jones, too. He, he He's a solid player. Etwan Moore has become a respectable player. Not amazing, not not a game-changing player, but he's a, a, a player when he goes on the court, you can expect him to do something positive, and he doesn't need the ball to be effective, and he's not a guy that you need to have the ball. He can just knock down easy baskets and do the simple things. He's a role player. And Alexi Agenta, he's he's influential to this team because it, Omar Ashik has been injury prone and they do need size. He can knock down the mid-range. He can knock down shots close to the basket. And he is 7'2 and 250. And Omar Ashik is a guy that stay, stays injured and he can't really score the basketball, but he's a big body. Just in case you you need somebody to protect the paint every once in a while, he's not an amazing defender, but he is a seven feet two fifty five big body that is mobile. Even though he ain't the scorer, he ain't the free throw shooter. He just a big body. It's a lot of money to pay him ten million to be a big body, but that's basically what the Pelicans is doing because he never really turned into nothing else but just a uh, rim protector kinda and. A big body, but <laughs> that's what they got when they signed them and gave them the extension. But now they got Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. They still need another move to add some more offense if they want to make a run at the playoffs. I don't know if this team can score enough. Alvin Gentry is a great offensive coach. He does have the talents. We've seen signs of what they can do last year in snippets. But this team going to be tough because they have star power. This team just needs some more scorers especially ball handlers and creators to make it easier for Anthony Davis that can shoot the three if you want to drive or you want to make a play or get to, to some room in the pick and roll with DeMarcus Cousins or Anthony Davis. That's damn near bread and butter easy baskets, but they still need more people that can create shots. And we'll see if they can pick those up rather in a trade or who knows how they do it if it's not this year or next year. But they running out of time because they got to find out what they're going to do with DeMarcus Cousins at the end of this season or do, during the trade deadline. And right now, they want to hope to keep him. 
but it, it looks like they might not be able to do it, even though it's not a lot of salary cap around the league. You get a guy like DeMarcus Cousins wanting to come to your team, you're going to find any way to do it, just like the Pelicans did giving up you for them. So let me know what you guys think about the New Orleans Pelicans. This is Quinn Wade, basketball and Nasa signing out. Check out my website, NasaPlayground.com. The link can be in the comment section in the description below. All you do is click the link in the center to the website. Also, check out my Facebook page, NasaPlayground.com. It'll be in the the link will be in the comment section below. All you gotta do is click the link and it send you to my Facebook page. All you gotta do is like the Facebook page to show support. That's all I'm asking you guys to do. And I have this team not making the playoffs. And I think they just have one more move to make just to get some more offense on the court. And we'll see if they make that move. If they make that move, then I see them making the playoffs. And if they don't, I can see them being around a 32 35 maximum 38 win team and that might be the ninth or tenth best record in the nb in the western conference which means no playoffs let me know what you guys think in the comment section below quinn way basketball analysis signing out